Well, um, the world and its double is how we styled this. Uh, this is simply a, a high visibility, flashy way of reminding people whose eyes fall upon that text that uh, the world has a double. The world is not entirely or completely what it seems to be. Culture, and by culture I mean any culture, anywhere, anytime, um, gives you the message that uh, everything is humdrum, everything is normal. In other words, culture denies experience. You know, we all have had, and even a population of non-psychedelic people have had uh, prophetic dreams, intimations, uh, unlikely strings of coincidences, uh, all of these sort of things. These are experiences which cultures deny. Cultures put in place, uh, I'm sure you've heard this word, a paradigm. And then what fits within the cultural paradigm is uh, accentuated, uh, stressed, and what doesn't fit inside the cultural paradigm is denied, marginalized, argued against. And we live at the end of a thousand-year binge uh, on the philosophical position known as materialism in its many guises. And the basic message of materialism is that the world is what it appears to be, a thing of composed of matter and uh, pretty much confined to its surface. The world is what it appears to be. Now, this on the face of it is a tremendously naive position because what it says is the animal body that you inhabit, the eyes you look through, the fingers you feel through, are somehow the ultimate instruments of metaphysical conjecture, which is highly improbable. Uh, it seems to me metaphysical conjecture begins with uh, the logic of the situation and then proceeds in whatever direction that logic will carry you. Well, if logic is true to experience, then uh, we have to make room in any theory for invisible connectedness between people, anticipation of a future that has not yet occurred, uh, uh, shared dreaming, all kinds of possibilities that materialism has denied. For approximately 500 years, the great era of the triumph of modern science, materialism has had, its, had the field all to itself. And its argument for its preeminence was the beautiful toys that it could create, aircraft, railroads, global economies, television, spacecraft. But that is, that is a fool's argument for truth. Uh, I mean, that's, after all, how a medicine show operates, you know? The juggler is so good, the medicine must be even better. Uh, this is not an entirely rational way to proceed. And now, at the end of 500 years, of the practice of rational, quote-unquote, scientific culture, we're literally at the end of our rope. Uh, reason and uh, science and uh, the practice of unbridled capitalism have not delivered us into an angelic realm. Quite the contrary. They've delivered 3% of us into an angelic realm completely overshadowed by guilt about what's happening to the other 97% of us who are eating it. Uh, it's not a pretty picture, modern civilization. Most people in the world today are quite miserable. 
actually. Uh, they have very little hope. Their religions, their traditional value systems are being eroded by uh, Dallas and Hawaii Five O, which are on the village television every night. Uh, uh, lifespans are being shortened by pesticides, chemicals, all kinds of things in the environment. And, uh, and there is very little political uh, light on the horizon. So I believe that it's reasonable looking at this situation to say that history failed and that the grand dream of Western civilization has in fact failed and now we are attempting with basically a carved wooden oar to turn a battleship around and it's a very frustrating undertaking uh, the momentum for catastrophe is enormous in this situation. Uh, now, what? but it's not 100% certain that catastrophe is what we're headed for because we are not 100% unconscious. There are people struggling to figure out how to control population struggling to figure out how to balance the relationship between the masculine and the feminine, uh, struggling to bring uh, amelioration of hunger and disease to various parts of the world. So we're in essentially a tragic situation. A tragic situation is a catastrophe when you know it, you see. And... Uh, Part of the Western impulse has been to subjugate all other cultural styles to our own. And this has, has taken the form of actually swallowing and digesting Native American culture. Uh, the ethnicity of European culture has been replaced by the mega culture of Nouveau Europa, whatever that means. Uh, cultures are melted down in the belly of the Western scientific beast and then they become structural members in an ever-expanding edifice of Western scientism. However, the psychedelic experience as practiced by shamans in many, many parts of the world is uh, apparently a, a bite too large to swallow. Psychedelics arrived on the Western uh, agenda only about a hundred years ago when uh, German chemists uh, brought peyote to Berlin and extracted mescaline. And for the next 50 years, up until about 1945, 55 years make it, very little happened. Uh, uh, mescaline did not, though it was taken by Havelock Ellis and, and William James and F, uh, F. Weir Mitchell, and it did not spawn a craze. It did not influence large numbers of intellectuals uh, particularly. Then in the, in the 40s, LSD was discovered. In the 50s, DMT and psilocybin were discovered. And then in 1966, all these things were made illegal. There was no real opportunity for Western science to grapple with these things before they were decided to be too hot to handle, made not only uh, unavailable to people such as you and I, ordinary people, but taken off the agenda of scientific research. In the Middle Ages, the church forbade dissection of human bodies, and, and medical students would visit battlefields and the gallows at night and steal the bodies of, of victims of war and executed prisoners in order to learn human physiology. Where that spirit of scientific courage has gone, I don't know, but there's very little of it left. Now people 
speed at the trough of government grants and enormous corporate research budgets and the idea of actually pursuing